going to be making a very simple door script in this video. If you watch the first few videos in my course, most of the concepts I discuss here should come easy to you. If you have questions as I go through this, be sure to put them in the comments below or email me at the address in the description. I'm logged into a sandbox here. I'm going to start by creating a simple cylinder. I'm going to adjust the dimensions of the cylinder so it looks like a tall, skinny tube. I'm also going to adjust the location of the cylinder so it's centered on the parcel. This way I have a zero point to work from as I build. I'm also going to change the color of the cylinder to black. Next I'm going to copy the location of the cylinder into my clipboard. I'll use this in a minute. Now next to the cylinder I'm going to create a square box. I'm going to adjust the dimensions of the box to make it look about the size of a door. Now I'm going to go to the position and paste the position in so it's copied right up next to my hinge. Then I'm going to move it over a half a meter so that it aligns to the edge of my hinge perfectly. And finally I'm going to link them together so that the hinge is the root rim. If you've linked them together correctly the hinge should glow yellow and the door should glow blue. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new script inside the door. We'll go ahead and change the name of the script to door script. For starters we're going to update this say function in the default script. We're going to use the owner say function in this case and we're going to ask the function to return us the string value of the current rotation of the door. When you hit save, you're going to hear the current rotation of the door in local chat. Initially, the rotation will be 0, 0, 0, 0001, which is the default rotation of the print. Go ahead and open the edit window and go down to the rotation box and update the Z option to an open position for the door. This will be the position the door is in when it's open. Now reset the script, and now in local chat, you'll get the string version of the open rotation. Go ahead and copy that and put it in your clipboard. You'll need that in a second too. I'm going to go through this script line by line. Some of it you may understand. At the top, we're declaring the default open rotation. This is where you'll paste in the rotation you've copied from local chat. This will be the default open rotation. Next, we're going to declare two rotation variables, open rotation and closed rotation. Finally, we're going to declare an integer named open and give it the value of false. By the way, if we didn't put equals false at the end of this, it would still be false by default. In the state entry event, I'm setting the value of the closed rotation variable to the current rotation of the object. Then I'm setting the value of the open rotation to the closed rotation times the default value. You'll see the value of doing it this way towards the end of the video. Now in the touch start event, I have a comparative that flips the door open and closed. First time we touch the door, the open integer will be false. So we set the rotation to the open rotation rotation. And then we set the open integer to true. The next time we touch it, we'll set the rotation to the closed rotation rotation. And we'll set the open integer to false. And because we did it this way, it doesn't matter what the starting rotation is of the door. You can put the door in any rotation and then reset the script and it'll open and close the same way from there. So it doesn't matter if your door is east, west, north, south, or at some strange angle, this will work. This is a pretty good example that uses the set and get rotation functions. Let's create another example that uses the get and set position functions. Take a look at this script. This script will move the box on the floor up and down. I start off by declaring an integer called up. The default value of up will be false, or zero. Then I declare two vector variables for the position of the box, up pause and down pause. In the state entry event, I set the down position as whatever the position of the box currently is. I set the up position as whatever the position the box is now, plus one meter higher. This equation takes the down vector and adds this vector to it. This second vector adds zero to the x, zero to the y, and one to the z which means my box will not move left or right or side to side, it will move up and down only. The first time I touch the box, up will be false, so the box will be moved into the up position with the set pause function. I then set up to true. The next time the box is touched, the function moves the box to the down position and then sets up to false. So again, each time the box is touched, it will move up and down. And when you first create the box, it's at zero rotation. But watch what happens if I twist the box into a different rotation. This script will perform the same way regardless of the position and rotation of the box. It will always move the box one meter higher. But look what happens if I change this slightly. 
Now instead of just adding one meter to the Z, I'm taking that rotation and I'm multiplying it against the current rotation of the box. It's not important to understand all the intricacies of this equation, it's just important to understand what it does. If you set the value of the position this way, the box moves horizontally against the top of the box regardless of what the rotation is. I hope that was easy enough. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you put them in the comments section down below. You can also email me at the address in the description. I have references there as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you click like and consider subscribing to the channel. See you in the next video.